In the negative results study, there was no difference in calories. They were eating the exact same amount of calories as they were before the study started. And that shouldn't be viewed as a weakness because we don't tell people to control calories with the insulin IQ no. education, and I don't think we ever should. But one of the things that just tends to happen is people just tend to start controlling their calories a little better. That was evidenced in the positive results study. They were eating just by self their own will, their own choice, just by nature of the eating window changing, they were eating about 10% 10, uh, 10 fewer calories per day just of their own volition. I think there's something meaningful there. So when they split these two groups in the negative study, they split them into two groups, the people, randomized. Um, one was the time-restricted eating. The other one was, I believe, just as much an intervention where they were told, you eat three meals per day. People don't do that. That alone is an intervention, which I think creates a bit of a confounding variable, that if they had been told, eat whatever you want, don't you're the control you, group, don't change don't anything, change what you doing. eat what you're doing, yeah. and then maybe try to attempt um, to, in the time-restricted eating group, kind of try to calorie match them, which isn't some, that's not easy to do. Uh, it, it is admittedly kind of next level difficulty, but, but in, a, in a rodent study, when we do this kinds of things in the perfectly controlled environment of, of rodent work, we, we will pair feed them. We will say, okay, the control group ate this much. We're going to try to help these other animals eat this much. Same calorie. Maybe it's a ketogenic diet or maybe it's a narrowed eating window, or time-restricted eating. But again, one of the problems with the negative results study is that the control group was just as much of an intervention. They were told, right. I believe, in, in just as much a way to change their diet than the time-restricted eating group. Because going to the average person and telling them you need to eat three, what did they call them? Consistent meal timing. Right. So that was the group. That was the control group. Consistent yeah. meal that's timing. Hard that's to know how much that's of a not a control. That, was for the control yeah. group. It's hard that is a confounding variable that I think was a bit of a problem. So those are some of the main concerns with the negative results study. I think there's a problem in forcing people to time restricted eat when they don't want to. Also, I think the control group was a bit problematic insofar as it was as much an intervention as the intervention group, the fasting group. Uh, and in the time, the, the eating window actually ended up going pretty late into the day. Uh, and I think it probably was pushing up till bedtime a little too closely, and that would offset some of the benefits. Now, another thing I'll say, in, in fact, to emphasize that point, and to these authors' credit in the negative study, they cite a study. They, they cite one of the concerns in their negative findings could be that the eating window was too late. Right. That maybe if they pushed it into the earlier in the day, there could have been a benefit. And they cite a study where the eating window ended at 3 p.m. And you know, that's a wonderfully long period of time before you go to bed. And I, the, more, the older I get and the more I kind of manipulate my own lifestyle, the more power I see in my life of going to bed on a relatively empty stomach. I'm not going to bed hungry, but I'm not going to bed full. That, to, that in my, as I'm in my mid-40s now, is the single greatest variable on how well I sleep and how well I feel the next day, how energetic I am. Don't go to bed full. I agree a lot with, with uh, what you've said, Dr. Bickman. I, I just have to say, in my practice, I don't have any of my patients in this negative finding study follow this at all because uh, as we emphasize here it's about controlling insulin and intermittent fasting is one of the many tools yeah. that we have and insulin control is by far the most important factor to focus on and my patients that focus on insulin control have tremendous success the ones that combine uh, time-restricted eating, the having a, a six or eight hour period a day where they're focusing on, on controlling insulin, keeping it low during that window, uh, combining those two variables have tremendous success. So this is a very interesting study that did not at all focus on insulin control. And I, I think that's, as far as I'm concerned, is the greatest variable that didn't play out in this study and may explain why they had a negative result because that wasn't their, that wasn't their focus.